Hey, it's Mike here. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at a video called Exposing How Much I Make as a Full-Time Content Creator from Katie Steckley. Uh, this is something I'm always interested in. And when people share their income, I used to do it years ago. I'm thinking about doing it again because I really love actually going through my own income and finding out what I'm actually making and what I'm spending money on. Sometimes you find out that you're spending money on things that you really shouldn't be doing it on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and like this video. If you guys can like my video as well, it really helps out my YouTube channel and I appreciate it and hit that subscribe button and bell notification. Let's jump in and see how much she makes as a full-time content creator. So a lot of people on YouTube are talking about how much money they make as a full-time content creator, but very few people are exposing not only what their revenue was, but also what their expenses and therefore their take-home profit was. It's really important that people talk about their expenses because I've seen people so many times say, oh, I make a million dollars. Well, if you spend 950000 of it on advertising or whatnot, you're not making a million dollars. You're making a lot less. Which makes sense because revenue tends to be the big, more impressive number. I have personally never shared this information before, even in my various videos talking about my income streams. But today, I finally am. Today, I really think that people should talk more about how much money they make and not in a way to brag, but simply to let others know that what's realistic and what isn't. I think online, especially in the internet marketing niche, we see people showing all these huge screenshots of money that they're making, but they don't talk about expenses uh, and you never really know what to believe. Hey, I'm gonna expose what my take home pay was as a full-time content creator in 2023 from a business that generated over $500,000 in revenue. Now, that's a big business. By the way, hey, if you're new here, my name's Katie and I'm a full-time content creator, a creative agency founder, and a part-time van lifer. Okay, now that we're a bit more acquainted, I feel more comfortable delving. The whole thing about living in a van has always fascinated me. Like, I think it would be really fun to, if you were able to live that lifestyle, I mean, it's, you're not gonna be spending any money on rent. You just gotta find a place to stay and you gotta keep your van nice and clean. But I, it's definitely something that would, that would be very hard to do with kids. However, I have seen people that have done the van life with kids. I couldn't do it. Delving into my personal financial details with you. So let's get into it. All right, we're gonna start at the top and work our way through everything. We start with revenue. Revenue is the total amount of money coming in. But then of course we need to subtract our expenses. Basically what it costs us to generate that revenue. When you take revenue minus expenses. I like her little, did you guys see her little uh, microphone there? It's got a little, oh, look at that. I, I love that. It said that little, uh, it's like a, like a little feather buffer thing on it. It's great. Revenue minus expenses, you get profit. But we're not done yet because we need to pay taxes on that profit. Finally, once we're done. It's really hard to actually put the whole taxes in on there because it's going to depend upon where you live uh, and um, so many other different factors in, in what you're doing. So most of the time people don't include that in there. They just kind of assume that you're going to know that they, they're going to have to do that. And with taxes, the final result is your actual take home net income. And yes, I'm going to show you the real numbers throughout. So get ready for a lot of charts like and graphs. It. In the past videos you've seen from me on this, I've talked about this annually because that's what makes sense to most people. Hence my title about the $500,000 in revenue. New. To prove my point, here's a screenshot from my QuickBooks. This is my profit and loss statement from calendar year. 20 that's really transparent. I mean, you don't see that kind of transparency from people nowadays. 2023, but today we're going to be properly financial and talk about things in terms of fiscal years. My business's fiscal year is from September 1st to August 31st. Here we're looking at fiscal year 2022 to 2023. So yes, it is a little bit less because when I speak about this annually, I'm also counting the income from September to December of 2023, which obviously is not counted in this fiscal year. We have to talk about it this way because this is the timeline in which I pay corporate taxes, but we're gonna get into that a little bit later. All right, I have talked about this in depth before on other income streams videos, so we're just gonna breeze through it, but I do think it's important that I talk to you about how I make this money. And by the way, all of the numbers I'm saying in this video are in Canadian dollars. And this is the current conversion rate to US dollars in case that's helpful for you. Okay, first we have brand deals. As you can see, brand deals is a pretty significant slice. Look at that. That's a huge slice of her income. And it just goes to show you that a lot of people, like you assume that these YouTubers make most of their money from their AdSense or whatever, those little ads that come up over the videos, but they're making a lot of money from brand deals. And most of the time they can't, they can't ex actually tell how much money that they're making from them. They'll say, oh, I can't tell it because it's confidential with the brand. 
but we'll see if she can let us know. This is the pie coming in at $147,408. This in particular was a really big increase for me from 2022 to 2023, and it really has changed like my entire business. All right, next up, we- I wonder what's sp sponsoring her. Probably, I mean, if you look at her content, you're gonna look at something that's related to it. They see how many views that she has, and they base their, maybe their budget on how many referrals that they get. I mean, it's, it's a complicated process. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure on her to, uh, to perform. We have Creatorly Media, which is my aforementioned creative agency. We provide services to content creators and influencers like YouTube video and podcast editing. And in this fiscal year, we generated $178,000. $630. It's really smart that she most likely uses her content to generate leads for that. So really good idea. By the way, all the details about that are at creatorlymedia.com nice. if you're interested. Next up, we have digital products. That includes stuff like the sale of my course, the Instagram roadmap, and my content creator starter kit, which is like a bundle of Notion templates, Lightroom presets and other stuff like that. And it generated $44,663. That's a nice side income. Next is one you're no doubt familiar with. You YouTube AdSense. It's such a small amount, look at that. So those are of course the ads that play here on my YouTube channel. That accounts for $34,012. Okay, I know it might look like this pie is full, but there is a tiny little sliver left and that is my affiliate marketing income. And in the- You know, usually you see affiliate marketing be a bigger chunk when people are sharing their income, but that's really small for her. Maybe she just doesn't do a lot of it. 22, 23 fiscal year, it generated $11,484. Okay, so with all of that considered, the final total was $427,075. Nice. Now see, this is where a lot of creators will end up saying, oh, I made $427,000, which is not untrue. That is how much revenue they generated, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper because this is not what actually ends up in my pockets at the end of the day. As they say, you need to spend money to make money, and so, Let's look at my expenses. My total expenses for the 22-23 fiscal year was $206,217. That seems pretty reasonable, spending about a half of it. I'm guessing that she's outsourcing that uh, creativity part of her business, where she's having other people do that work for her. She's bringing in the leads, outsourcing it, having a team do it, and keeping the profits. So. Pretty good. Here's a screenshot showing you the full scope of that, but this is the breakdown that matters. The vast, vast majority of that. Yep, I knew it comes down to me paying the team at Creatorly Media. Remember those services that I talked about before? Yeah, so I have a small agency, we edit podcasts, we edit YouTube videos. It costs money to mm. get people to do that and obviously I'm not doing it all by myself. So shout out to the Creatorly team for the awesome work that they do for our clients. The vast majority of my expenses go towards paying them. Honestly, the rest is just kind of a mishmash of subscriptions, bank fees, my phone bill, paying my bookkeeper, my accountant, my lawyer, some travel stuff here and there. I did a whole video breaking down all of my expenses if you're curious about it, but I think the main takeaway here is that when you have a business that involves hiring people, that is always gonna be your biggest expense, which for the record- I mean, you could always hire, I'm curious where she hires people from. If she's hiring them from Canada, it's probably gonna cost her a lot more than if she's hiring them from someplace like the Philippines or India or Ukraine. So, I mean, she might be able to reduce those expenses by hiring from different places or maybe she's just happy with the way that things are going. I am very happy to do it. I think is well worth it. It's very important to me that the team at Creatorly gets paid fairly for their work. So to me, it just makes sense that the pie chart looks like this. We have now arrived at my business's profit, which if you've been doing your own math, you will already know was $220,858. That's still really good. That's that's a nice income, don't, especially if you're living in a van. Don't worry, I don't expect you to do your own math. I mean, I wouldn't die. There's just a YouTube video. Quick reminder of how we arrived at that. We started with my profit, which was $427,075. And we subtracted from that my expenses, which was $206,217, which is roughly a 50% profit margin. So what do you guys think of that? As far as her making about $200,000 in profit from over $400,000 in income, do you think that's good? Do you think that's bad? Let me know in the comments below and make sure that you like this video. It really helps out with my YouTube channel and I appreciate it. Uh, and make sure you hit that subscribe button and bell notification. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in my next video. Thanks.